many of the sort of economy shops, like, say, Poundland or BM Home Stores, are selling a range of electronic cigarette liquids and stuff like that called 88 Vape. And if you go into a place like BM Home Store for about five or six pounds, you can get the full kit. You can get a rechargeable battery with the charger and uh, the clearomizer or cartomizer, whatever you want to call it, uh, the vaping assembly um, based on the standard, very popular Ego system. So you get the full kit uh, and then you just buy the liquid. The liquid's only about a pound for uh, in various flavors and various strengths of nicotine. In Poundland, however, they don't do the rechargeable version because they're trying to keep the cost to a pound. But what they do is they do a disposable battery. And it looks like the standard uh, sort of rechargeable battery, but there's no LED. When you push the button, it operates, but there's no flashing or, or illuminating LED. And fundamentally, as long as you keep that button pressed, it, it just runs continually, making me think that it's just a plain switch in that. So it, it works fine. Produces the plenty of vapor as you'd expect of these devices. I will say I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to take too much of this stuff because this does contain nicotine, and I'm not totally into that. I like these units because of the effect they give, the vaping effect. But uh, not. I'm not so into it for nicotine. But these, uh, I can tell that this one does contain the propylene glycol as well as the glycerol because it's got that throat hit thing favoured by smokers, which to me just makes it feel like it's burning when it was in, which isn't very nice. Nice enough flavour though. That's a sort of. Uh, traditional tobacco-ish type flavour. However, I digress. You see, I was thinking these disposable batteries uh, are probably like the disposable electronic cigarettes and they actually contain a fully rechargeable battery, but they just treat it as disposable because it, I, as far as I can see, it's a lot cheaper to make a lithium cell that is uh, rechargeable than it is to make a disposable one. So it seems to be like they just regard it as, you know, it's rechargeable, so we'll charge it up once, you use it, and then that's it finished, which seems awfully wasteful. <clears throat> so I opened one. The, I noticed also that uh, some of the finish in these is not very good, but then what do you expect for a pound? Yet yeah, this one, it's very good finish. So I popped one open, and inside was a very small, uh, what could be a rechargeable cell, with one connection just against this sort of foam pad that just skids against the side of the metal casing, which isn't a very good connection, to be honest. And uh, this bit's put in a friction fit, and there's also a little plastic carrier for a circuit board in here. I'll pop it out, in fact. Where's a screwdriver, and I'll just pop that out right now, if I can pop it out. Because all it's held in with is a there's a little catch and if you press that catch in, this is where something bursts into flames. Oh, actually, I'm not getting, going to be able to push that in unless I use a much smaller tip. Oh, there's one. So if I push that little catch in, the there's a little plastic sort of... Yeah, this is all going to go horribly wrong in a moment. So you may have to just... Right, just trust me when I say it. There's a little plastic carrier with a, a sort of ratchet latch in it that just clicks in and it holds a circuit board. And all that's on this circuit board in here is a button. That's it. There's nothing else. And I thought, well, uh, for, for, here, for a comparison, here's the rechargeable one. It's got a fat cell inside it. What they call a... This one is a 13450, which means it's 13 millimetres diameter by 45 millimetres long. And it says 2.41 watt hour. Okay. Uh, I've not tested this one. This is supposed to be, I think, 650 milliamp hour capacity. Yes, 650 milliamp hour capacity. But anyway, um, what's really interesting is this one, because I decided, OK, it's round about 4.2 volts output when fresh, and I deliberately, I made an adapter, actually, uh, out of one of these cheap sort of modules, and put a resistor in and made it drive some LEDs, just a string of LEDs, just to discharge the battery. And I ran it down to about three volts, and then I thought, right, okay, let's try and recharge this again. So to recharge it, all I did was I got the disposable battery. Uh, let's bring something in to charge this. Let's bring this beefy power bank in. And obviously, if you just plug this in, it's not going to charge. But if you push the button and it connects through to the battery, uh, this is fully charged, so it's not going to charge either because uh, it, it, the voltage is too high for it to kick in. 
But uh, if you push in the button, it just connects straight through to the battery. So I got a rubber band and I put a few turns on and I rolled it along over the switch and then clicked the switch in and I screwed into the charger and put it in a safe container just in case it did go horribly nuclear and I charged it and it took a capacity, keep in mind it's a small cell, it took, took a capacity of 230 milliamp hours and then it stopped charging it, it topped out at 4.2 volts in this unit because this unit, this unit, uh, well I'll show you the inside of this, it's got a wee chip in it that uh, basically puts out 4.2 volts and does the charging thing so then I plugged into the fair lights again and I ran it flat uh, on the fair lights, well down to about 3 volts. And then I charged it up again, it also took 230 milliamp hours. And then I ran it flat, and then I charged it again, it was also 230 milliamp hours. So to the best of what I can see here, this is a rechargeable 230 milliamp hour lithium cell that's in these disposable devices. Now, I can't say that for, for sure, obviously I can't tell y'all, hey everybody, go and buy these and then try to recharge them in case one of them explodes and burns your house down, but um, from what I've seen it does look as though they're treating a fully rechargeable cell as a disposable item, and by putting a bit of tape or a rubber band around that and putting it into one of the 4.2 volt output chargers with the current limiting, then you can charge these up uh, again and reuse them, which is useful to know. Uh, let's take a look inside this. This, of course, is not from Poundland. This was from BM Home Stores. It's the charger that comes with the kit. And inside, because let's face it, I really have to take everything to bits here, don't I? Inside is a little circuit board, single-sided, with one surface mount chip and a few components. And this is a generic charge chip. However, its numbers that it's got written on it are LC1053D, and underneath that it's got ZY1432A. I'm wondering if the 1432A is actually a date code, I'm not sure. But um, I looked all the usual suspects online, could not find one matching this chip, but it's this sort of stereotypical charge controller chip with, that drives the two LEDs and it puts out about 4.22 volts. Well, I measured that with this cheap Chinesey sort of toy meter, so there's no saying how accurate that is, but it put out uh, what I regard as acceptable voltage for charging the lithium cells, um, and that's what I use to recharge the non rechargeable cell. So that's kind of interesting that you know they're doing that. Uh, it also means that if you like making your own mods and stuff like that, then this is a this one pound device is going to yield the connector for you. Uh, I will say, to check them out, well you can't check them out because they're in boxes, but uh, this one is a bit cruddy inside, the coating is not very good in it, but this one on the other hand is immaculate inside, it's fine. So a bit variable, but um, yeah, it's interesting, it was certainly worth trying that little experiment to see charging it, uh, if charging it worked, and it did. So um, yeah, it's another source for little experimental cells if you're willing to take the risk of uh, trying to recharge stuff that isn't really intended to be recharged. I've just thought of something else that's worth mentioning. I've stuffed an LED in into, into the end of this connector and I do have a resistor in line so that when you push the button, the LED lights and you could basically, you could actually theoretically make a little flashlight but the reason they don't normally make little flashlight adapters for these rechargeable batteries is that if you hold the button in, then as a safety device to protect the uh, device from going on fire in your pocket and keep in mind these disposable ones don't have that facility then after about 10 seconds, the LED will flash and the button and the power will go off to the load, the heating element. And the only way you can get it back on is to release the button and press it again. So uh, that rules out, I mean, it'd be use it would be okay if you were just using it as literally a flashlight. You just, you know, give it a wee pulse of light every so often. But you can't just hold your finger on it and have continuous light. So it rules out the idea of uh, a screw-on torch and then a little flashlight. Uh, it's also worth mentioning, because this is a good time to demonstrate it, uh, just in case uh, you've not come across these before and maybe you've got a dead power uh, supply, electronic cigarette power supply that's done this, if you press the button repeatedly several times it'll suddenly cut off. And that's a safety feature so that if it's, you're going to put it, if you're going to travel or put it somewhere in a, you know, in a pocket and you're prone to press the button then you can actually lock it out like that so it won't actually power the electronic cigarette, the vaping device. And the way to unlock it uh, is just to press that repeatedly several times again, one, two, three, four, five, and it comes back. 
um, into normal operation. Oh, I've just uh, cut it out again. So um, if you use one of these disposable batteries, which doesn't have any of that electronic circuitry, which is just one chip really, then that uh, doesn't have any of those features. So you could actually use this as a little LED flashlight, you know, just so that as long as you hold that button pressed, uh, the LED is going to be lit. And keep in mind, I do have a resistor in here. It's, a, it's about a 10 ohm resistor because it was designed to run a big string of LEDs and discharge the battery quite quickly. But uh, So that's maybe just pushing this LED quite hard. But um, yeah, it just shows that, you know, that's one feature that uh, because it's not got the protection electronics, you can do that with it. But yep, it's, it's quite interesting. It's quite interesting indeed that, you know, the... Uh, and, you know, when you look at the uh, battery technology, proper disposable lithiums, if you can really call them that, the ones that aren't genuinely rechargeable, they actually contain a modest amount of metallic lithium, and they're the ones that can actually... You can open them up and uh, get the lithium out of them or, you know, throw it in water and it causes a little firework show. Uh, but these ones, the rechargeable ones, uh, don't contain much actual lithium at all. It really is, as the name implies, it's lithium ions. It's just a sort of trace quantity of lithium ions transferring through the sort of electrolyte from one side to the other. And the reason these ones explode when they get abused is because um, when they short out, it's just pure energy dissipation. It's the fact that all that energy stored in the battery is coming out very quickly and it gets very hot and uh, the electrolyte is combustible inside and when it ruptures and sprays that out, it can burst into flames. But that's nothing to do with the actual lithium itself. That's just the energy dissipation and the sort of combustibility of that electrolyte. But yeah, interesting things.